Hi everybody, my name is Dave Marsh. I'd like to welcome you to this Matrix 360 CMA tutorial. And today we're gonna to take a look at how to create a CMA in Matrix. Now before I begin, I'd first like to mention that because each MLS has slightly different requirements, the system that we'll be using during this tutorial may differ slightly from the one that you're currently working with. Nevertheless, the functionality is the same and for the most part, whatever you see during this tutorial, you'll easily recognize in your own system. Now there are actually a few different ways to create a CMA in Matrix. The first is by starting one from scratch. And to do this, we're gonna hover over the My Matrix tab and then select My CMAs from the drop-down menu. And this takes us to our step-by-step -step CMA wizard. So let's begin by first clicking on the Start a New CMA button. And from here, select who we're actually creating the CMA for. Next, I'm going to select Matrix 360 property as a CMA type, and this will essentially allow me to search for MLS listed as well as non-MLS listed properties from the public records to use in my CMA. And finally, there's also an optional description area if you'd like to add any private notes about this specific CMA. But for now, let's go ahead to the next step of the wizard and select which pages we'd like to include in our CMA. And from here, you'll notice if we expand the page categories, we see each of the default CMA pages that are available to choose from. So one quick way to add all of the pages from a specific group is to simply select the section's heading. Now, in addition to this, we also have the ability to include our own custom PDF pages as well. And we can do this by first clicking on the custom pages link and then browsing your computer to where the file is stored. All right, so once you've found your PDF, simply click the Upload button, then save it to your Pages section. And from here, you may want to modify the order of how these selected pages appear in your document. And then set this as the default layout if you plan on using these same pages in the future. All right, so now we're going to proceed to the next step of the wizard, which is choosing our subject property. And here we have a couple of different options to choose from. The first is by manually filling all of the details that you'd like to include as part of your subject property. Now the second method of adding a subject property is simply by doing a search. So for this example, we're going to autofill our form and we'll do this either by using the MLS number or by searching the criteria such as all active, residential homes, in this area, that are between $650,000 and $750,000 with two plus bedrooms and three plus bathrooms. All right, so let's go ahead and choose this listing as our subject property. And of course, this takes us right back to our details page where we can add or modify any of our pre-populated fields. In fact, a little further down the page, You'll notice that there's also an area provided to include additional fields from the database or even create custom fields of our own. Now, if you've chosen to include a cover sheet from the pages section, this next step is where you add your contacts information. Below this, you'll notice that my agent information has already been pre-populated. And this was initially set in the CMA cover sheet section under my information. So to permanently modify your default settings, simply click on the Edit My Information link or on the Override My Information link if you'd just like to update it for this specific CMA. All right, so now it's time to choose our comparables. And we can do this either by adding properties pre-saved in a cart or by doing a search. And because we'd prefer to use properties that are similar to my subject property, I'm gonna keep the exact same criteria that we used before. But this time, I'm also gonna add non-MLS properties from the public records, as well as any sold and expired statuses. All right, so let's go ahead and randomly choose some properties and then click to add them to our list. And again, if you've chosen to include a map as part of your CMA, this next page simply displays where your comparables are located relative to the subject property. Okay, so this next step of the wizard is completely optional. And what we're essentially doing in this section is giving the user the ability to further refine the prices of their comparable properties. 
For example, even though our comparables may be similar to the subject property in many ways, they're often not exactly the same. So with price adjustments, what we're able to do is modify a comparable property's features price so that it's more comparable to the subject. To demonstrate this, let's take a look at bedrooms. And we can see that our subject property has five in total. While one of our comparables has more, one has the same and the others have less. Now let's assume that the average cost of a bedroom in a higher end home is $20,000. So we'll go ahead and add $20,000 as our base value. And what happens next is that Matrix will automatically reduce the price by $20,000 per bedroom for every comparable with more bedrooms in our subject property. On the other hand, comparable properties with fewer bedrooms in our subject property will have $20,000 per bedroom added to their value. And again, this is to compensate for the difference in the total number of bedrooms compared to the subject property. But now let's assume that maybe we're familiar with this property's extra bedroom. And maybe it doesn't need this much of a reduction in price, so we can override that value, which is now indicated by a highlighted background. All right, so let's do the same for bathrooms. And again, we're going to assume that the average price of a high-end bathroom is $30,000. And Matrix automatically adjusts the comparable prices by $30,000 per bathroom according to how many more or fewer bathrooms they have. Now, if you'd like to adjust the prices of comparables using a feature that's not available by default, simply return to the subject property step, then add it as a custom field. And if you scroll to the end of your adjustment detail section, you'll see that these same fields have now automatically been included. All right, so we're gonna move on now to the pricing step of the CMA wizard. And again, this section is completely optional. And the summary section is where Matrix calculates the low, median, average, and high amounts for all of the comparable and adjusted comparable prices. Below that is another optional area for agents to include a suggested list price or add any additional notes that should be included in the CMA as well. And finally, the finish step displays a summary of each completed step of the wizard. Now, a couple of additional things worth noting. There are currently two ways to save a CMA. The first is with an autosave feature, and this automatically saves your work each time you proceed to a new step of the wizard. The second way is to save a CMA manually, and we do this simply by clicking on the save icon. Now, in order to display your CMA in a PDF format, you'll first need to have your free Adobe Reader installed on your computer. Then click the View CMA button to generate or save a copy to your system. To send a copy of the CMA to one or more of your contacts, simply click the Email button, then enter the recipient, as well as any other additional information that you'd like to share. And now as the client, let's open our email account and take a closer look at the message sent from our agent. And you'll notice that Matrix doesn't actually email the entire CMA, but instead sends a link to the CMA, which can typically be accessed for six months on the server. Now, if you remember, I'd initially said there are a few different ways to create a CMA. The second method is from importing your comparables from a search. To do this, we're gonna generate some random results. Then select the properties that we'd like to use as comparables in our CMA. And from here, simply click on CMA in the button bar, and we're right back in the CMA wizard, except this time, we can see that our comparables have already been added. All right, so the third way of creating a CMA is from a property itself. So again, Let's go ahead and create a random search for our subject property. And then from the full display, we're going to click on the View Comparable Properties link. And what Matrix will do is automatically run an algorithm to search for 20 of the most closely matched comparables. Now to modify these results, simply select a property to remove it, or click on the Find More Comparables button to update any of the default criteria that was initially used to generate the comparables. Then click on Results, and finally select any of the new comparables to add to the list. 
And again, with your comparables now defined, we can generate a one-click PDF report using selected pages from this drop-down menu. Or we can import this subject property, plus our selected comparables, back into the CMA wizard. All right, well, this concludes this Matrix CMA tutorial. I'd like to thank you for watching and hope that you can join me for another session. Take care.